What is up? Need for Speed Racers. It is I, your wheel man, Alex Cornut. I am here with the Mini John Cooper Works Countryman. Why we don't just call it a Mini Cooper like we used to is beyond me, but you know, we gotta innovate. So add 14 more letters and characters and 13 words and make it a sentence so that way everybody's confused. Uh, <laughs> I'm not a fan of the car, you guys. I built it in B class a bunch of different ways. Wasn't happy with any of them. Okay, throw that out. Built it in A class. Wasn't happy with that. Threw it out. Built it in A plus. Still not happy. Built it in S. And guess what? Sucks still. So I think maybe the best place for it would be to do just full scuff, go off road everything, cram all the horsepower into it, and then cross your fingers and have a mid car. But I, I didn't do that because honestly that's super, super niche and I don't think anybody would use that build just because it really wasn't that good. Um, you might be able to run it as a drift car. I'll be honest, I didn't try it in the drift scene. I got so frustrated with all the amount of time I took building it and testing it in all the various classes to when I finally got 2S and it still wasn't performing the way I wanted it to that I just like threw up my hands and went, all right, here we go. <laughs> so let me bring you what I got. No negativity, but I just want to be super honest. This car is like bottom tier of stuff. It's not as bad as some of the terrible cars, but it's definitely not great. But you could probably still pub stomp in it. It's just a little slow. Let's dig into it. Now, from the styling aspect of it, it's got some pieces. It's a pretty good looking car. I, uh, I do like that. I mean, there's a lot of different kits you can get for it. So that's the stock look. Speed Hunters kit's pretty cool. I, that wing on the back is wild. I've never seen one of those. I think that's, it's like it, they flipped it upside down, kind of. Um, you kind of do the off-road stuff, street attack, just, there's a lot of stuff you can do. If you like the lights, whatnot. So I would give this car a full three out of three on what you can do for styling. It's pretty sweet. Um, I really liked the way the car looked. I, I enjoy that, but that's kind of where it starts and stops from there, because it's all downhill from here, boys. And not in the fun way, more like pear-shaped. So we go to the parts. For the engines, you guys, I didn't build out the Winkle. I know for certain that engine just doesn't have enough torque to carry us where we need to be. So I'll go through them with you. Uh, the engine that we're building on today for S-Class is the 3.6 liter flat 6. 281 brake horsepower when we start. Now my man Sadrose that is in the gameplay footage with me, he was testing as well and he was running the 6.2 liter V8 when we tested and we lined them up and ran them side by side and in a drag race uh, the 3.6 was pulling away from them and because handling really isn't like something we're super worried about with the car this is definitely where you start but guys I built up both of the i4s um, it just doesn't get us where we need to be when, when the reason I say I built them up you'll see that it's still just S277 but when you go into the parts we've got Elite Platinum all the way across the board on it so yeah, you can change the transmission to bring it up in the speed category, but you can't add more power. So gearing it out to go faster doesn't make it faster. Uh, so that's what I wanted to show you with the parts right there so that you guys will see that. So the 3.6 liter we've got built out, 329, pretty solid, and there's a little bit of room left. Whereas the, both the i4s, they don't get there. Those are That's max builds on both of them. Not enough horsepower to make it work. Let me equip that again. Um, so you'll see we're 200 horsepower down, 100 foot-pounds of torque, same deal, about 100 horsepower, 100 foot-pounds of torque, and that, that's kind of the trend you're going to see as we go through all the engines. Now, that i6, cool. The reason it's the higher PI value and doesn't fit in the class is because of the 060, but look, we're missing lots of power, lots of torque. The flat 4 was something that I thought was pretty close when I was testing it. It felt pretty good. Uh, that little more torque helped and just the way that power curve worked with the transmission had a little higher top speed and so overall it felt pretty decent 
And then the 6.2 liter V8 was the other one that I would say is actually the second best engine. Uh, when you build that one out, you're missing about 70 horsepower, but you've got a little more torque. And overall, it felt pretty good. So I would say if you're going to go dabble and look into stuff, there's a lot of different ways you can do it. Now, the V10, you can't do any forced induction. That's all motor with Elite Platinum parts. The moment you touch it with a turbo, it takes it up to S+. Plus. So there's no way to take that engine with forced induction to make it fit. So I would say, guys, long-winded explanation, but out of all the engines, I'm thinking the 3.6 liter um, flat six is the way to go if you're going to build it out. Now, for the parts for this build, you are going to do Sport Bronze Induction, Elite Platinum ECU, Elite Platinum Fuel System, Elite Platinum Exhaust, and Elite Platinum Roots Supercharger. If you go and you take down the um, handling a little bit, you can make the screw fit if you want. I tried them both. Uh, there wasn't enough of a difference between the two, so I just ran the roots because it fit a lot easier. Um, I don't think going to the turbos is going to be the way to go. In the lower classes when I was testing stuff, I tried it with that, and it felt sluggish every single time. It, it just felt worse. And so at S class, that shouldn't change. Um, but I mean, I'll be transparent with you guys. I didn't spend as much time on this car as I sometimes would when I'm searching for that optimal perfect build because... The car, even if you got it like just dialed in the best this car could be, it's still going to be Omega Mid. Uh, Sport Bronze Nitrous, Elite Platinum Road Suspension, Silver Pro Brakes, and Elite Platinum Grip Tires. Super Gold Clutch. And we are going to pair that all up with the Sport Bronze 5 Speed Transmission. That's another thing that makes the car rough, you guys. That 5 Speed is what's hurting us. Fifth gear and fourth gear feel really long because it pulls really slow through those gears. That hurts. Uh, that's why it doesn't feel very fast because it really doesn't accelerate as good as you'd like it to. A lot of the other cars in S-Class are just rocket ships and they're a little rowdy for that. This is pretty predictable and easy to drive, but that's because you're going really slow. The issue that we run into is as soon as you put a six or a seven speed in it, even the eight speed, it brings that top speed so high, even though you'd never get to 232 in a race. Um, it just takes it right out of the class. And so we're fighting the way the game calculates stuff. It takes that theoretical top speed and says, oh, that's S+. Plus. It's so fast. It's like, no, that's over mid, like not that good. So just keep that in mind, you guys. Um, I'm not trying to be negative. I'm trying to be just in really informative here. I don't want to catch anybody off guard with the build. Uh, Elite Platinum Diff, that way you get 100% on your slider because we are full Beyonce on this one. Auxiliary nitrous drift, nitrous grip, as I do, so you can do the mini dr or micro drifts. Handling 100% full Beyonce to the left, to the left. We're gripping and ripping on this one. Steering sensitivity, two clicks high, that's where I like it, it's all good. Downforce, run it all the way high, that's where I started. You can go a couple other spots, you can go all the way low if you want. It doesn't matter. But uh, I was running it high in all the testing, so maybe you'll want to copy that. But if you're wanting to run it a little lower, maybe give it more opportunity on the top end, that's probably the way to go. Uh, traction control is off, and then drift entry is brake tap. That's going to give us the mini John Cooper Works Countryman 2017. S-Class 329. 209 is your top speed. I never saw top speed in this car during my testing, so like... Maybe you'll get there. The fish hook, you probably would. You'll get walked by everything, but you'll get there. 776 for your horsepower and 648 for your torque. Uh, overall, you guys, that's not a bad speed, but really it's or a, a bad horsepower and power figure. But the car's kind of heavy, and I'm, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to pull up my car weights, which I haven't done that on this thing yet. Let me just compare this. So the mini con, uh, the mini John right here, it's uh, 1540 kilograms. Um, for comparison, the Lotus Exige is 935. So, um, another car that is good in this class, uh, that has like, okay, so the GTR, the R34 is 1560 kilograms. So the R34 is like really comparison weight to weight. And that car is a lot faster. You get more horsepower and stuff in, in S class. So that gives you an idea where we're at. Like this car is kind of on the heavy side of things, but doesn't really have the power to match up. Uh, let me see here if there's any other cars that are kind of similar on that stat. 
Um, let me see. Oh, the Subaru WRX STI 2006. Uh, that's 1520, and the 2010 is 1530. So even both of those Subarus are lighter than this one, and they're geared better, so you can put a little more power in them. So that's really the biggest issue with this, is even though it's a mini Cooper, uh, it, she's thick, she's thick. So you're fighting against that, and so your power to rate ratio is really hurting with this car. A uh, long-winded explanation, kind of a longer build, but there's not a whole lot of positive things to talk about, so I want to explain to you why it is what it is. Uh, I do have gameplay footage at the end of this. It is just me and my man Sad Rose. We're both running the Mini. Um, I grabbed footage while we were doing our testing, and I found that I was like, "That's we're never going to get a playlist with humans today. Um, update, kind of a pulse on the crew, where we're at, uh, the Core Nut crew. We are, a lot of us, playing the Crew 2 right now. It's not cross-platform, so if you're trying to play with me, I'm on PC, so uh, bear that in mind. But... A lot of your cars that you buy in that game are going to transfer over to the Crew Motorfest when it drops in a couple of months, and that game is cross-platform. So a lot of us are starting to build up our garages over on that game. We're getting in some time. I might do some content for that just to kind of start easing our way into that because I think the Crew 2 uh, is the current game that will transition into the Crew Motorfest. And so trying to kind of ease that transition, uh, that's where I'm headed a little bit myself. Spending a lot of time playing that this week. Uh, also, join the Discord. Copium series we're running right now. It's the M1 on Lakeside. Not super popular. Not everybody's loving that this week. But get excited. The Corn Nut Crew Copium Tournament is coming in August. Shooting for teams of three. Fourth as a floater. Kind of as an alt if you need it. Uh, start clicking up with people. Making friends. We've got money prize pool we're shooting for a 500 dollars prize pool or more depending on how donations work and we're raising money for an orphanage here locally to me and it's going to be the biggest tournament that need for speed unbounds ever had and that's going to be our big send-off for the game so get involved plug in with us we'd love to have you it's going to be awesome and the discord is the best way to link up with us if you are not a member of the discord but you're listening to this and you want to be part of that tournament send me an email alexcornnut at gmail.com and I will work with you and make sure we get you on a team. Other than that, guys, thank you so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, follow. I play racing games. That's what I do. Play other games too, but racing games are my forte. And uh, I'd like to have you along for the ride. Have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye. All right. I got my man Sad Rose with me. As all things with Volume 3. Uh, there was 14 races avail racers available. We sent out the playlist. And so obviously it's just him and I. Uh, so we're running mini versus mini. Uh, the times will be the ones that kind of determine how good the car is. Uh, I could pub stomp with this thing no problem and make it look good. But really it's, uh, it's pretty mid. So I don't want to accidentally surprise anybody with it. Now, Sad Rose has got a little different engine than I do. He uh, decided to go with the, the V8, so if he walks me, we know why. Damn. He decided to crash and let us catch back up. That's a, he's a true homie right here. Oh, dude, what a move. You desynced that car over into me. problem with the Mini is it's got a little bit of weight to it, even though it's a little car. And you really got to pack a decent amount of horsepower into it before it becomes competitive. In the S class, uh, we had to do the 5 speed because all the other transmissions took us out of the class. And so the gears feel a little long, when in reality it's it would be better with a 6 or an 8. But, you know, beggars can't be choosers. Yum. Like right here, we're cruising in fifth. This is where the skyline, where a lot of the other cars that have a lot more power in the class or power to weight ratio is better. They just walk you. Now, mind you, this has got a decent little top speed. It's not bad. Um, this kind of fits in line with like the the new Golf GTI that we just did last week or week before last. Um, you know, it's not going to blow your doors off, but. It's pretty easy to drive, which is something that I don't think a lot of cars get enough credit for. 
Um, this this car doesn't surprise you. It doesn't step out on you. And, you know, you can humble some people by beating them in a Mini Cooper, so that's kind of cool, I guess. We'll wait till we get a three bar. Cap it around that corner. Little aggressive. I tapped the brake, kind of trying to do a light um, braking after I boosted. Just to turn a little sharper, and it turned pretty sharp. Well, I had a couple of crashes, and so did Sad Rose. So neither one of these times are really going to be a very good uh, depiction of how good the car is. If we can get a clean blue collar run, that'll tell us where we're at. 150 or faster, and you have a super good car and a super good driver. 155, same. Sub 2, good car, driver knows what they're doing. 205, kind of the standard. If we're slower than 205 on a clean run, the car's kind of underperforming. So let's see what we can get going here. Oh no! <laughs> Truck. Alright, so there went our clean run, right? <laughs> Try to wiggle. Hit the, f the bar on exit. We got burned. We hit that car. And so we lost all of our boost that we were about to accumulate. So we don't have a three bar for this corner. So out of the gate, we are going to be about 10 seconds slower than what a good run with this car would be capable of. Got a couple of near misses here. All right, we lost our boost anyway. So yeah, we're just stuck in fourth gear going over the hill, really not gaining any speed or any momentum. And the S-Class build on this car has a lot more power than the A-Plus version does. Like the A-Plus version does like maybe 400 and some change horsepower. You can get a little more out of it, but um, it's really quite a bit less. And so if this performs at this level with 700 and some change, you can imagine how sluggish it would be at the lower class. And this would perform really well in the A-plus class if you could get these stats out of it. But because it goes to S, we're kind of dealing with a very low end of the S range of the car. Like I say, I think you could go pub stomp with it, but you're not going to... You're not going to surprise anybody with the amazing Mini Cooper. Yeah, like, so that's a 220. Like I said, we lost 10 or 15 seconds pretty easy, so I think if you were really on it, this car is capable of, like, 205, 210, but I don't wake up excited about it. But honestly, with the current need for speed unbound as a whole, it's uh, I don't know. It's really hard to say what the situation is. There's a lot of new players out there. A lot of them aren't racing. So shoot, you might be able to build this up and race newer people, and they'll think that this car is Omega Meta. <laughs> It's crazy to me how much the game has regressed from where it was at when it first launched. I mean, like we were hunting record times all the time, pushing down stuff, innovating pre-shift and Tron turns and just all the stuff, just learning new mechanics every day. And they're like, yeah, you know some of that stuff you guys have been working on? We're going to go ahead and take that away. But we had link-ups. Oh, hey, you know how you like racing stuff? How about a beanie? 
so I don't know. Um, it's it's tough. I do like that this car's got all-wheel drive. Uh, it's making it handle this dirt section pretty well. It's Tron turns real sharp. I definitely can't complain about that. Catch fifth, boost through that, get this car up to top speed. What? <laughs> Dude! What? No way! I've never seen a car pull into a gas station. No way, dude. <laughs> Amazing. We tried really hard to get some near misses there, and all we did was crash. <laughs> yeah, sub 50 on this track is cruising, but we obviously hit that, uh, that car that was turning into the gas station. It's pretty rough. Um, that, that's the Mini Cooper, you guys. Uh, it's hard for me to get excited about it, so I'm not going to oversell it. If you want the car to use it, build it, do your thing, it's probably not terrible at the S-Class, but um, it's definitely lower end of mid, but that's where we're at. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.